Good morning everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off-grid in Australia. Uh, today's video is a food prep video. So, uh, I discussed with people about uh, going into the intro about why I do the food prep and things like that, and everyone was happy for me to keep it, and they could just skip through if they wanted. So, we shop every six weeks, and because we shop every six weeks, we uh, have to do a lot of food prep post that six week shop to allow that food to last us for the six weeks between shopping trips. Uh, a lot of people, when I discuss doing six to eight shopping, six to eight week shopping trips, one of the big questions is how do you make things last? Uh, so there's different ways that we preserve, cook, freeze, and all the rest of it to allow for our stuff to go that long. And because we do it as a six week shopping trip and there's eight of us, it tends to mean that a lot of the preserving that I do, I do most months because it's only to last us for one, two, three months worth of uh, shopping periods it doesn't have to last us particularly long term though i do buy in bulk in season from the fruit and veg store and sometimes we do buy so like at the moment we've got plums in abundance because i got some from the fruit and veggie store but we also got some in the hamper and it's plum season well it will only be plum season for a short period of time so we've got enough plums there that realistically i'm making most of a year's worth of stuff that i would make with plums uh, but other than that most of the stuff is done in smaller batches because we shop every six weeks so it's about getting it to last that six 12 18 week sort of period times so that we can rotate what we're purchasing now, I normally do a daily video for seven to 10 days post my grocery shop showing you everything I do in that period of time. This month has been a little weird. Uh, I, it has, we've had Easter, I had a secondary fridge die and we've got an inverter that's not working at the moment. The new one is at the post office today. Daryl's going to go and fetch it today. Uh, we've also had a lot of projects that we've been trying to get done. There is uh, some chicken pen projects that need doing and we're trying to get a head start on the gardens for winter, you know, prep and some cold weather crops and things like that. And there's just been lots going on. So uh, what I've got today is a couple of days condensed of food prep for you to cover a couple of subjects because that f found the easiest way. So I've been filming the whole time. So I have the camera in the kitchen and I film all the prep and everything else, but I've been slack about putting it together. And so now I've got days worth of footage that I have to work through. So I've been putting together the what we eat in a week because people always like to see them post the hamper videos. They like to see what we do with the stuff in the hamper. So I've got a what we eat in a week that will come out uh, sometime in the next few days that I'm working on and a couple of other food prep videos in between. Also a couple of specialty videos. I did a dairy free rocky road. Uh, I made the marshmallow, I made the jelly, I made the biscuits and the chocolate and everything and I got asked to share that whole process and I do some sourdough apple fritters as well that I got asked to show the whole process of that as well. So I've got a couple of things there to share as their own just short videos as well. Uh, but today was mostly pork roast so let me get to my notes and start uh, voiceovering for the what happened in this video uh, and it was I have no idea what day that food prep this ended up being or what dates or anything else like I, I do know the dates because the videos have timestamps on them but it's not clear to me whereabouts in the whole sequence of this is and this is a couple of days mixed together but this is food prep post a six weekly grocery haul uh, of the stuff that needs to be done in the rate of time that needs to be done pork last has really long uh, best before dates on it it's vacuum sealed up as a roast and has really long best before dates on it so it's one of the last things that i deal with generally speaking uh in that two weeks post the grocery haul so that's what we're covering today so i'm still working on lemons as well we still have uh lemons to go and actually this is like I'm voiceovering post dated I still have some lemons to get through so uh, so I made a big batch of lemon curd because everyone loves the lemon curd they spread it on just about anything that I make uh, and it uses a good it uses quite a few eggs as well so we do a dairy free uh, lemon curd using coconut oil instead of butter and I do it in my thermix and I know I say this all the time but it is one of the the things that I love about the thermix the most are the fact that I can throw all the ingredients into it for something like a lemon curd and then I can turn it on and I can push it out of the way and I can keep on going. So I didn't show specifically here, but while the lemon curd was cooking, I made flatbreads for, for breakfast. So I put all the ingredients in, so a couple of eggs, the coconut oil, the lemon juice, the sugar, and then you turn it on for nine minutes, nine to 12 minutes, depending on what ratios you're doing or how big a batch you're doing, uh, and 90 degrees for at speed four. And it just cooks into this lovely curd. Uh, it, it, it just, 
it's just one of those things that I really enjoy about the Thermomix and I, it sounds like I'm harping on it but the ability to put all the ingredients for something into a pot and hit go and walk away and have it perfect there's no need to strain this at all there won't be any egg bits in it that sometimes can happen if you're doing a stovetop one and you cook a little bit of the egg and you end up having to strain those solids out it just turns out perfect every time and it's great uh, i also made i didn't end up filming it but i also made another one of the lemon coconut cakes with the thermix bowl after i scraped it out of the lemon curd because i thought well that bit of lemon flavor from the lemon curd would be really nice in the cake as well so i scraped it clean as much as possible and then made one of the lemon cakes that i have been trying to master that sort of a spongy lemony fresh sort of a cake uh, and i think this one was perfect so i bumped up an egg level and a little bit more fat and things like that uh, so i made that in the thermix and put that in the oven as well after making the lemon curd so as i said we need to get work on the pork so i've got two pork roasts left in the fridge one we've already used uh, I decided to turn one into uh, Canita, Canita style pulled pork. Uh, I do make a Kahlua pulled pork quite regularly, which is really nice, but I wanted to just change the flavor profile a little bit. So I was looking at different ways of pulled pork in a pressure cooker. Most of them are in an instant pot. I'm using a stovetop pressure cooker. Uh, and so I did a bit of research, looked around at all the different recipes and sort of winged it from that point there. Uh, so I cut all the pork into the chunks uh, that were just biggest chunks but just chunks so that it would take less time to break down in the pressure cooker basically uh, if you've got too big a piece then sometimes it'll pull away nicely at the edges but you get to the middle and it's a little bit tough so I find that cutting it into chunks works well for me I put a bit of bacon fat in the bottom of the pressure cooker and browned off all the chunks of pork. So you, this is an optional step in the end. You do not have to brown off your meat, but there is lots of people out there who claim that it's so much better flavor if you do. Uh, and it does leave some little nice chunks of browned bits in the bottom. I salt and pepper the pork before I cook it off in the pressure cooker, uh, cook it like sear it in the pressure, bottom of the pressure cooker or an Instant Pot if you had an Instant Pot and then uh, do it in batches. So if you do it in smaller batches, it means you get more of that browning, more of that caramelization, more of those bits in the bottom of the pot. If you put too much in there, it just stews in its own juices and it doesn't have the same effect, uh, which is, I suppose, what happens if you throw it all in without doing the browning. You're stewing the meat rather than browning it. So the idea is that you're sealing the edges of it, sealing the juices in. I don't know how scientifically accurate that is, but people swear by it. So I did it because I was standing there anyway. So while I did that in the batches, browned it all off in the pot, I cut up garlic and onion as well. So I may as well have been doing, browning it off while I was doing something else anyway. And cooked, and then once it was all browned off, you got all those lovely brown bits in the bottom with a bit of fat. So then I put, I had a half a bag or a quarter of a bag of the bacon bits that I got on clearance at the butcher when I did the shopping. And that will add a nice bit of fat to the, dish because I'm using rolled shoulder pork it's not particularly fatty like most people would use uh, a Boston butt or whatever it's called or you know the the ones that have more fat to them so I put the bacon in the pot to add a bit more it's going to add some smoky flavor but it's also going to add a bit more fat and all the onions and the garlic as well and cooked them off until the onions were a little bit translucent uh, it's not necessary but by doing that you're sweating the onions which means that that liquid is going to pull all the bits of browning off the bottom of the pan as well you can add a little bit of stock in there too to get all those brown bits off if you need to some people deglaze with wines and stuff i just use a little bit of stock personally so i put so one side browned off the got all the brown off the bottom and cooked off the onion and add a little bit i put the pork back in and i added some stock now i most of the recipes call for orange juice and some had milk in it some had um other various ancho chilies and things like that i decided to go fairly normal i've got a whole lot of lemon so i used lemon juice and just a dash of sugar just to counteract the acidity a little bit uh, and i used bay leaves i didn't use any milk because i'm not entirely sure of the purpose of that and we would have had to use dairy-free milk so i don't know whether that would have then defeated the purpose of the purpose of the milk if that makes sense so i put bay leaves salt uh the chicken the sorry the pork was already salt and peppered as well and then the lemon juice and then 
stock I think I already said stock but liquid in there then put all the pork back into the liquid to be cooked now I pressure cooked it for 60 minutes uh, there was a variety of different times listed but most of them were for the instant pot so I went for 60 because I felt like that was a good amount of time if it was in a jar it'd be 90 minutes but that's a little overkill I think for this style so I did 60 minutes in the pressure cooker and it worked well for us uh, I made some cashew cheese in the Thermomix. Uh, I think I ended up, I tried to make a little clip of how this works. So I'll see if I can do it as a short too. But I basically just use raw cashews uh, with boiling water, salt, onion powder, garlic powder, a bit of paprika and some turmeric. You don't have to use the turmeric, but it, it does give it a nice color. Some lemon juice and nutritional yeast. And then I just blend it until it's right so I just throw it all in the thermix and blend it if it's a little too thick I add a little bit more hot water and then keep scraping it down until it's nice and smooth that's all I do I throw all the I'll, as I said I'll try and put the ratios of what I generally use but I do tend to do it a little bit just haphazardly as I do a lot of my cooking but we throw it all in and get it to the consistency you want sometimes I like it thinner for certain things sometimes I like it thicker for other things too so you can adjust that as you want with the hot water as well I also mashed up some of the avocado for just a simple guacamole so uh, we're still working we were still working through the avocados at this point I still haven't used the frozen guac yet uh, only the fresh avocados because we obviously want to use them first I think this was the last time I had any fresh that were usable so I just mashed it up with a bit of lemon juice garlic and uh, salt I think and then just mashed it all up into a bowl so we could use that the cake was cooked at some point during all of this that I had made up and so I'd let it cool a bit and then I cut it so this is perfect this is exactly what we want it wasn't crumbly it held its shape well it was light and fluffy uh, spongy like but not overly so because if it was overly so then you got the risk of it falling and stuff and I don't want to go to that much effort so uh, it was it was pretty perfect so I'm really happy with this I'm going to make it once more though before I share the recipe because the it could have been a fluke <laughs> so I want to make sure it works so I'm gonna make it once more it's such a tragedy having to make another lemon cake but I'll make it again and then I'll share the recipe so I might film I might do a short or something while I'm uh, like a vertical shoot of it while I'm making it and then I'll share the recipe for it uh, I really suck at doing shorts because you have to use vertical rather than horizontal so the more I can have any reason to do one the better I suppose uh, so we cut that up that was fine alrighty so dinner we had the have I shown you the pork somewhere if I have I have not written my notes so but for dinner we had the pulled pork with corn chips uh, and the canned salsa and cashew cheese with the avocado as well so we uh, I like to put the corn chips in the tray and I bake them for five minutes then I add the pulled pork and the salsa and bake that for five minutes and then I add the cheese and bake that for five minutes I find that that works well to keep every all the layers nice and crispy I'm not sure why we've discussed this last time I think something to do with maybe well, I suppose cooking the corn chips makes them a little you're cooking the water out of them so I don't know however it works it seems to work really well so we did the the nachos for dinner we really enjoy nachos uh, and this is one of those meals that I'm getting those black beans for to see if I can add some beans to the to the uh, topping as well and see if everyone likes them uh, Daryl's really looking forward to me getting those black beans to try making some burritos as well for him so we will see how we go with those once we get them but uh, it's definitely going to be worth a try so then the next day because I t said this was going to across a couple of days there uh, the rest of the pork was turned into mince so I had another seven kilo ish roast that I need to do something with I decided to turn it all into mince I cut it all up into the pieces that are suitable size for the mincer uh, and then minced up the whole roast so it's around about seven kilos and I'm using the Louvel mincer which uh, I have an affiliate code for if anyone's interested in it uh, and it was an upgrade from my KitchenAid mincer and I love this mincer I did that whole seven kilos in one go in like 15 minutes I don't I didn't time it but I probably have timestamps on the video but uh, it's you don't barely have to put any pressure on it so the KitchenAid I used to struggle because you had to push really hard at such a height and lifting my arms anywhere near shoulder height is an issue for me so having to lift them above the KitchenAid 
like plunge a spot and push the mince in was really difficult uh, and it used to overheat so because it was a lot slower uh, so I'm this Lavelle mincer was a wonderful upgrade I'm really glad that I spent the money on it and uh, it works it just works wonderfully it's so quick and simple it feeds itself pretty much and it didn't get warm at all in that seven kilos and the power usage is really low so somewhere back there's a video of a review of it and it shows the power meter as I'm using it and even though it's rated to like 1200 watts so I was a little concerned it never drew that high an amount it was only running at like the 350 400 at the most which is a nice low power draw for something like that for us so I minced all the all the pork and then stuck it in two bowls. I did two different flavors. I did a standard maple breakfast sausage flavor, sage, maple, brown sugar, um, salt, pepper, paprika, all that sort of stuff. A very basic maple um, breakfast sausage type flavor. And then I, the other one, I did a chorizo esque sort of a flavor, but I was lacking some quantities of ingredients. So uh, one of the main things that they use is the guajillo chilo, chilies in uh, powdered form in a lot of the ones that I was watching or you could soak them and puree them but a lot of the powdered form seemed easier so I had some dried guajillo chilies that I powdered to use in it but the thing is that I've been buying those particular chilies to use for birria and stuff and they're not cheap uh, I think I'm paying nine dollars for a hundred grams of them or something so using the powder was a little uneconomical for what I was doing. Uh, I've been keeping all the seeds out of them but I don't know whether they'll be viable because they were dried chilies so I will buy some seeds as well and the hope is that in this fingers crossed good growing season this year <laughs> I can grow a whole lot of these because this is this is one become one of our favorite chilies. Uh, jalapenos, the argy pineapple chilies and these will be the three that I will grow in abundance. Uh, the jalapenos for the cowboy candy, the guajillos for a lot of this Mexican style food. I really like the flavor of them. They've got some heat but they're kind of fruity. It's nice. Uh, and the aji pineapples again they they have that real fruity flavor with that little bit of heat. Anyway I squirreled didn't I? So I was lacking some quantities for the chorizo flavoring uh, and so it tastes it tastes wonderful it, it's perfectly fine but it doesn't have quite the depth of flavor that I would have expected as a chorizo style mince. Uh, so it's perfectly tasty perfectly usable in anything we want to use it in uh, but it doesn't have quite the strong flavor that I that I feel like chorizo has like store-bought chorizo but again do I is that accurate either I don't know or authentic I don't know so uh I, we it was perfectly flavored fine I cooked a patty of it off so that I could taste it and it tastes fine uh, and we're going to use it in a lot of things but it definitely doesn't taste like chorizo in my opinion but that's my fault not any particular recipe's fault because I didn't follow a single recipe either because you know that's not something I'm capable of doing. <laughs> so anyway, we flavored it all the mints and we stuck it in the fridge for 24 hours to let it permeate properly. Uh, and then oh, you'll see a whole bunch of ways I use it in the what we eat in a week video because we use it, we cook it off uh, in different ways and use it cooked in different ways. Like we, it's just, it's just another meat product. Uh, it's, we use it differently to the way we use beef mints. Uh, it's definitely got a different texture to it. A, a a better texture for a lot of things. I find that pork mince has this better mouthfeel to it. It's more like you're eating chunks of meat rather than a beef mince has a tendency to be when it's cooked in something it goes softer. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe it's just the way the beef mince is minced too. Maybe it's just the fact that I mince the pork on a fairly coarse grind and if I was mincing my own beef maybe the beef would be similar. That might be something to look at too. Uh, but most places that you buy even if you're buying half a cow, they mince up all the pieces that need mincing and they give it to you. I don't know whether you could select a grind for that or not, uh, but maybe I need to try mincing up a roast of some sort and seeing what the texture is on beef that I've minced myself. Maybe there is a significant difference in the grind that causes that different mouthfeel. I don't know. Anyway, again, squirreling, aren't I? It's a bit of a day for that. It's been a long day already and it's not very late. So uh, yes, thank you for joining me again for this video and the food prep and for all the feedback on previous videos and I have been really slack with putting stuff out so sorry about that. Uh, I'm noticing too while I'm standing here looking at the 
because I was looking at the lens, not the screen, that the shadows are falling across funny. So hopefully this is all good. Anyway, I will see you on the next video. As I said, I'll get that what we eat in a week sorted. And I've still got a few more food prep videos as well that I'm collating together when I've got time. And I will see you next time. Thanks, guys.